So I've had this vehicle for a while. Uh, I got it in November of 2022. Uh, we're now in 2023. It's a, it's a Honda Step Wagon. Uh, I got this thing at the port. It's a tow dolly. Could have driven home. Um, well, we could have probably driven it home, but the thing is, is that glad we didn't because we immediately had to change the transmission in it. 200,000 kilometers. When we had it, it was about 180, which is, yeah, so I had about 108,000 miles on it. Found the service records at, uh, at 60,000 miles or 100,000 kilometers. The uh, time belt was replaced, but the transmission was bad. Now, this is the thing about auctions. They only drive the cars in a parking lot, so you really don't notice there's a transmission problem until you get up on the highway. The first transmission we put into it was one from an Acura Integra, cost about 100 bucks. We had to do this weird modification with the shifter. And I found one at JDM Place of Houston that had 50,000 kilometers on it, or 50,000 miles, I forget what. But anyway, way less. Put that thing in, that was put in January and it's now june it's been running great ever since yeah i just want to kind of go over this thing oh yeah first time of two weeks after having it, first time driving to uh, the city of new orleans boom got that by the airport airport construction now i'm trying to find a windshield for cheap that's that's the only problem about importing these jdm cards if you import something that wasn't brought to america finding windshield let's talk about the weird key thing so you see it's unlocked put the key in now it locks every single door. This is the only way to have power locks is from this, this point. Another way to lock it, because this is a, like a Honda thing that Jeff has told me about, is you can hold this handle and press this down to lock it. Then it locks all of them. But you can't unlock it like that. You gotta do the same thing to unlock it. Now it's a safety feature, so I'm not pulling on that thing. Can't lock it. So it's kind of like to make sure you're aware that you're locking the door. Cause I'll say this while driving, my elbow hits that a lot. It's a little dirty. I bought a vehicle purposely that was not in great condition. Don't mind the Taco Bell. Uh, mine, they had swapped the radio out. Uh, it's a pretty cool rig to get in and out of. Don't mind all this trash right here. But it basically, that folds up, and then that folds in. You get the idea. Look, there's a ton of videos talking about these things and, like, all the features and stuff. And, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is how easy is it to get in. And you can kind of see it's pretty damn easy. I currently have the seat all the way back it's lean, and lean a little back. Plenty of room. Uh, the steering wheel does tilt up and down. I keep it up. So I kind of drive this thing like it's a van, you know, I kind of drive it in that mode. But to get in and out of it, it is pretty easy when it's in this mode. It's also at the perfect height. SUVs are sometimes a little higher to get in and out of. This thing's at the perfect height to just, you know, it's called a step wagon. It's, that's what it feels like. You just step, boom. And I'm five foot seven, 400 pounds, and this thing, is easy to get in and out of some step wagons come with a little captains if i had that it wouldn't i wouldn't fit in it because i do bulge out past this thing because there's no center console wind gotta wait for the toll tag thing because of this i don't feel as secure because the door is right here and the door's pushing me in so with no center console if you take a right it's so easy to be like ah oh. Now, when you buckle up, it's not as a problem. Now, when I was 463, because I've lost a pound, I'm 400 pounds now, I've, I've lost 63 pounds in a year. When I was much heavier, like 40 pounds heavier, when I got this thing, or maybe I was, I don't remember how exactly, how heavy, but I was heavier. Buckling up was way more difficult. Super, super difficult. Unlike Toyota's, Honda seats are short. Seat belts, sorry. Unlike Toyota seat belts, Honda seat belts are short. So this thing, as you see, boom, and I don't have much extra. And I'm also like sitting way up, which is kind of a good thing. But now that I'm buckled in, I can't reach a cup hold, a cup down here at the cup holder. I can't even reach the cigarette lighter or the ashtray. I can barely reach the uh, AC controls and I gotta really lean into it. 
I can and I can barely reach the radio. I can reach the hazard and rear defroster. Obviously, the stuff on my right. That's the only thing I don't like about it because the seatbelt's so short. If the seatbelt was longer, like a Toyota, I'd be able to reach some of this stuff. So sometimes when I want to get stuff, I'm, I, I got to do one of these numbers, kind of like wiggle out of it, or unbuckle, grab, hold something in the cup, then rebuckle. You know, what I've done is you can't really see. I have tape and I take like water bottles and I insert them in the tape um, that's sort of my solution to the problem but yeah other than that it's it's all right it's not the most comfortable seat either put like a thousand miles on it in one trip uh, going across uh, the southeast to Georgia Florida and uh, Tennessee it's not the most comfortable to sit in for long tr trips even as a passenger it's not I don't find it very common the seats are, are for me are not comfortable Jeff likes the Honda seats he thinks they are comfortable I think they're not for a big guy they are very uncomfortable so but I also use this thing to, to haul things around and I have been taking on trips been sleeping in the back taking breaks in the back things like that because it is since there's no cruise control which that's the thing about Japanese car when I get cruise control in this I'll be able to drive this for longer distance but my knee acts up because I have a bad knee and so I have to pull over and take a break which is fine because I have a little cargo area I could easily take a break and it has a rear AC thing which you can't really see out of view to, to pump AC so I could leave the car running and jump in the back and just cool off and rest. Yeah, let's just take it for a quick quick spin around up and down the uh... the thing I don't like about the step wagon is this engine the B20B Jeff loves them because you can turbocharge and get lots of power out of them. But the power is all at the top in our opinion, which is great for a sports type car or a sporty vehicle. But that's not great for a van. That's what this is, is a van. It's the haul people, haul cargo, and the engine is just not good for that. I can squeeze out 27 miles to the gallon on the highway. For a big vehicle like this, it really needs a bigger engine. I think there was the F. F24, I think, was the a motor they had at this time, or something that was bigger that was in the Honda Odyssey, the four cylinder. That's what should have been in here, was whatever motor that is. It's so underpowered, like, there's just no power at the bottom end. You really need that torque. Toyota at this time started putting engines out with the FE head, which were more lower end torqued head for your regular driving. But that is the big problem with this uh, van is the power. That's the biggest problem. I find. I mean, cruise control, seating, whatever, is power. If I just had maybe 20 more horsepower, or at least if, I'll say that, it, it almost would have been better if if Honda would have just taken the same motor, would put different camshafts in the head, and just put camshafts that were better suited for lower end torque. Because that's, that's where I think the biggest problem with this vehicle is it just doesn't have power at the bottom end. That's it for this video. If you got any questions, uh... About the step wagon or any other such vehicles I've driven, leave a comment below. Uh, again, this is Tubuku Auto. See ya. Uh, so yeah, I had originally a, I had the seat right here that would lay flat, slide forward or back, and spin around, and it had the little jump seat right here in this area, so you could fit three people theoretically here. And then two people in the back. I really couldn't. Unless it was like a tiny, tiny kid. Would you really want to put the tiny kid next to the door? I don't think so. See, I have a bunch of stuff in here. I got rid of it so I could move stuff with it. But like the Honda Element later on we had in the U.S., these seats, these seats fold up and hang onto the side. So you still have these seats. You don't get rid of them. I mean, you could re remove all of the, the stuff uh, from the walls and unbolt them. It's, but I like the idea that you can keep seats and these will just drop down and you know if, if you want to go go somewhere you go somewhere it does have like little cup holder stuff over there but when I had the seats in here it really wasn't that comfortable for for adults to sit in the back like you would have to have this seat slid all the way forward to be comfortable back there or this seat all the way back and you still weren't that comfortable up here so if, you, if you're a bunch of adults, maybe not. But if it's you and a couple of friends, you know, you driving a friend up here, 
fold one of these down you still got room on the side to put like fishing rods or whatever camping gear put an ice cooler right here in the middle you know you still have a great time in this van that's the <laughs> way i said that uh but you know what i mean you know what i mean uh like i said you got an ac separate ac system up here uh for the back yeah so yeah lots of room i had scooters in here push these guys up take this you pull that little tab right there and that is what adjusts the back as for laying in it you know sleeping in it i found it not as comfortable I didn't find it as comfortable sleeping on the uh, the padded stuff, the padded seat, uh, just because, see those little buckles? You just, you couldn't, you, 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 there's no way to stuff them in the seat, so you had to lay on top of them. So it was not very comfortable to sleep on for a big guy like me. So that's another reason why I got rid of it. I usually carry foam and like a foam pillow top, like one of those child's foam pillow tops or like that thick foam and extra foam and pillows and that's what i've been laying on haven't got the right combination yet for those but uh i'm getting there i like is that because it's a step van type situation is the low deck height this is low i mean i can get my foot up here to tie my shoes if i need to what's great is i can sit see i can sit here what I've done is I've lowered, raised this up. Let's see. What I've done is, yeah, I would raise this up and then I can lean against it to have some back support. Also, I've, when I film drift events and go on to film stuff, this guy is like a canopy. So it's basically a canopy on the back. So you're not getting soaked by rain. Now, if the rain is really harsh and it's coming in the side, well, you're going to get wet. But I can sit here with a tripod in front of me and film out the back and not have to worry about the camera getting wet. And if it does start to come in, I can easily just put the camera inside. Mm -hmm.